This is your host, Mary Jam, from Mary Jam's Ghost of Adventures, and I'm actually reading a story at Rock Space Cemetery while we're trying to do it. They're still doing construction, so it might be a little loud in the background. There's also a lot of people at Dallas Road, so I'm waiting for uh, to not be there. So I gotta read the story, hopefully. It is a little long, but it's a Rock Space Cemetery is actually haunted. I'm reading from Victoria of Most Haunted Ian Gibbs, who is a part of Ghostly Walk, so if you can, buy the book. There's lots of stories in here that I've actually wanted to cover this week. Thank you guys for it. So, since I'm at Ross Bay, I'm probably do this one. And don't mind me about looking around. I'm just making sure that there's no wildlife close by. Because there are a few deers not too far away. They're still hanging around here. There lots of people and so, like I said, the construction. So, I need to you the story from Ian Gibbs about Ross Bay Cemetery. I hope you can hear me because I don't want to be too loud since there is still quite a few people in there. The Ross Bay Cemetery, the third graveyard to be built in the Detroit area, opened in 1873. It is on 27.5 acres to the ocean and was named after Isabel Ross who donated that land for the cemetery. Bella was a Methodist woman and the first independent female landowner in British Columbia. Isabella's son was buried there in 1876. Grave is across the path from his. She was buried in 1855. So that is her grave. I haven't been able to find it. I haven't really looked around. So. Graveyards are not generally full of spirits because most spirits choose to remain within their families or at the homes they live in where they were alive. Ross Bay seems to be an expectation. I have certainly felt energy when I, I have gone there, he gets it in this book. Once I started doing some research, he found he wasn't the only one. One man, a former groundskeeper at the cemetery, had a long and involved conversation with another man who said he was a former groundskeeper at the cemetery himself. He discussed technical aspects of groundkeeping. The former employee seemed quite knowledgeable and even gave the current groundskeeper some excellent tips on maintenance that hadn't occurred to him. It wasn't until a few days later when the groundskeeper mentioned his conversation to a colleague that he learned that the man had died on the job several years earlier. A lady in black has been seen in the cemetery lingering over a child's grave. People see her walking around, but when they look back, she's gone. The cemetery is flat and the only thing Obstructing the views are the trees, but they are not big enough to allow a person to disappear. The lady in black is not the only person to have been seen wandering around before vanishing. This is a fairly common occurrence at the Ross Bay Cemetery. Troy Reed, the same Troy Reed who saw a First Nations construction worker's spirit at the Empress, had an experience in the graveyard he won't soon forget. One night he was walking through the cemetery when he came to a museum that wasn't actually there. The graveyard is officially closed at night to theater vandalism, so perhaps the spirits became more protective after dark. Troy certainly felt this. At the same time he was seeing the phantom Malaysian, he was also overcome by a female spirit that stopped him in his tracks. It was so powerful he couldn't breathe. 
I was eventually able to tear himself away and got out of the cemetery as fast as he could. Boss Bay Cemetery became the final home for many of British Columbia's most elite and influential citizens. There are a number of museums in the graveyard that reflect the wealth and statues of those within. The Dunfermline Museum has the subtitle Energy, as does the Quincy Museum. The energy near the Dunfermline Museum is significant and understandable. Father Dunfermline was one of the wealthiest men in British Columbia because he struck it with in the coal industry. I actually do have a video on that on some photos as well from before. Robert and his family were the powerful people of British Columbia for many years and they were used to having people do what they asked. They also left their mark on the city. Robert left behind Pirate Castle and his son built Hadley Castle. People looked into the ghost investigation that the Muslims have found that the cameras will malfunction when they attempt to take a picture of it. Big screens and shadow pictures are all that come out, but once you move away from the museum, everything returns to normal. The Dunfermers were a pretty stubborn bunch, so, so Ian is not surprised. They seem to be trying to control things from beyond the grave. The Mackenzie family established their final resting place so the whole family could be together, but one son, who chose to gamble and drink his life away, was deteriorated, and when he died, he refused to entry in the family crypt. It seems he hasn't stopped trying to get in. On stormy nights, people would see a shadowy figure slip in the museum itself. The sight came so well known that the family, fearing someone was living in the museum, had it end an iron gate installed on the crypt to keep any one out. However, the darkened figure is still seen seeking shelter inside the museum today. Dolan Kirk him, had a rather startling experience at the cemetery. While having gone to the cemetery to do an investigation, she was there one afternoon helping out a cemetery tour, which was a fundraiser for an upkeep and restoration of the cemetery. She says she was accompanied by two spirits. One was the spirit of the son of a famous Victoria spiritual named James who had died in the war. Though he was killed in Europe, his spirit returned to the only grave marker he ever known, the one in Ross Bay Cemetery. The other spirit was a bit more disturbing. It was an older woman who was clearly insane. This woman was wearing a dirty white nightgown. She had long nails, filthy hands and feet, and wild gray hair. The woman kept yelling at Dawn's face. She alternated between high pitched laughing, ha 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 ha, and sobbing. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to note that at this point in the tour, the group was very close to where Isabella Rock's house had been. After her death, her house had been used as an insane Asylum. The woman thankfully did not follow Dawn around, but stayed where she was so Dawn was able to move away from her. Andrew Murphal, a local ghost hunter, also had some interesting things happen to him in the cemetery. One time in attempting to do a paranormal investigation when he saw some glowing orbs in a monkey puzzle tree. He also started to hear church bells. Well, this puzzling enough crows then began to circle overhead. Andrew looked around and realized that he was standing next to the grave of David D., a man who was murdered on Christmas Eve when he was leaving the cathedral after a mass. David has also been reported as showing up as a white mess to several walkers and visitors to the cemetery. Other things to look for in the cemetery include the ghost of Isabel Ross, looking out to sea with a sad, downcast look on her face. Something seems, something else seems to linger near the largest angle in the graveyard. Another couple of dressed in a full Victorian venery are said to buy through the western part of the graveyard from time to time. No matter where you go in the graveyard, there's a chance you will encounter something, be it fantastic and peaceful, the disturbing and anxiety and don't forget there's also Matthew Bailey, Big B, Emily Carr, just to name another few famous people.
Fall in Undercurrent. So once again, this is your host, Mary Jam, from Mary Jam, Post the Adventures, reading you from Union Gibbs, the story of Ross Bay, from Vancouver. I've been here since Sunday, sitting here till tomorrow morning I'm leaving, so I've been here for quite a while, and I've been showing you the ghost of Emily Carr, as well as some other ghost stories, so I had to, had to stop by at Bay Cemetery, which is one of my favorite places. Follow me at Facebook.com or slash Fat from 1831, showing you what did we see. This is your host, Mary Jam, from Mary Jam's Ghost of Adventures here in Victoria, BC, for tomorrow night. I've been here since Sunday, and I'm not sure there's something construction, so that's what the noise is in the background. But I basically just read the story from Victoria's most haunted Indian Gibbs on Ross Bay Cemetery.